much, much more diverse than the lycopodiophytes. There's many, many, many more different types of species. Um, they have true leaves, they have true roots, um, and they have uh, clusters of sporangia on the sporophytes called sori. Sori is plural, singular is sorus. And I can show you a picture of that. And these are usually on the, the bottom of fern fronds. So like this is a fern frond, this is a top, and then if you flip it over and look in the bottom, you'll see sori underneath. And those are basically clusters of sporangia that will produce spores. So this is the underside of a fern, and these are the sporangium. See the spore? That's a sporangium opening, and then the, the fern, I mean the spores are just being uh, flipped out. They open like this when it gets dry. So you put a light on it, and it starts drying out, and the sporangia unfold, and then shoot out their spores. So that's what this video is showing. So these are sporangia within a sorus. So a sorus is just a cluster of sporangia. So all these are sori underneath the fern leaf. Okay? So if we look at the uh, life cycle of a generalized pteridophyte or pteridophyte, uh, we can st again start with the gametophyte. Uh, the gametophyte is also known as a prothallium. Okay, so that's another structure you should another word you should know. The gametophyte uh, in ferns and uh, fern-like plants has this heart-like shape to it. Notice it has a little heart-like shape to it. Oops. And it grows underground. And so underneath the ground you have this little heart-shaped little uh, gametophyte, prothallium. And it's microscopic. I mean, this is teeny tiny. We're talking about so small uh, you can barely see it. It's probably maybe um, a few millimeters in size. Um, again, we'll see one in the lab. But it's very tiny. And that gametophyte, like all gametophytes do, has gametangia on it. It has an archegonia and an antheridia. Remember, because it's hermaphroditic. So in the crux of the heart, it has the archegonia. And then down below, in the lower portions, it has antheridia. So that prothallium, that gametophyte, is producing both egg and sperm. And so what will happen is that uh, it will release sperm. The sperm will either fertilize its own archegonia or swim away to fertilize other archegonia. Um, they are flagellated, so it does need to be near water. Um, and then, um, so it is water dependent, just like the bryophytes are. And then it, once that sperm reaches an archegonium, um, whether on the same prothallium or a different prothallium, um, it will fertilize that egg, turn into a zygote, and then the sporophyte will grow out of that archegonium which is on the gametophyte, right, on the prothallium. So the sporophyte, again, grows out of the gametophyte, just like it did in the bryophytes. And then that produces the fern that you think of when you think of a fern. When you think of a fern growing on the, on the ground, that's a sporophyte. And so that is growing out of a gametophyte on the ground. Notice it also shows here a uh, rhizome, where you have different ferns growing out of that rhizome. And then you have, uh, on the underside of your sporophyte, you have, like we saw, those sori. And then those sori are clusters of sporangia. And each, so here's a sporangium, basically one sporangium. The so whole thing's a source. And then you have many sporangia within that source. And then every sporangium has thousands of spores being produced in it. And so here's your sporangium. We just zoomed into one here. And as you saw in that video, it cracks open and the spores fly away, and then when they land, it produces a new prothallium, a.k.a. gametophyte. Okay, so again, this is a slide, this is a diagram that you need to know. Okay, you will see it again on exams and quizzes and things. So let's talk a little bit about the pteridophytes, or pteridophytes. Um, so those are ferns, we also talked about whisk ferns. 
Whisk ferns look like this. They look weird. There's no real leaves. Um, and so they do possess rhizomes, just like our ferns do. But they look like they have no leaves. Um, and in fact, these stems is what goes through photosynthesis. And so the leaves are just these tiny little nubs here that you can see. Um, and the sporangia, like, so in ferns, we have the sporangia on the undersides of the, the fern fronds, right? And here, our sporangia are at the tips. See the sporangia on the intersection of some branches? Those are sporangia. Right there. So that's where our spores come from. So this is what uh, whisk ferns look like uh, in nature. Okay, and our last group, our last trilophyte group, are the horsetails. They're called that because they look like horsetails. Um, and so horsetails can look like this, um, and then sometimes they lose these these leaves here, and it just looks like a, a stalk. Um, they also have rhizomes, just like the ferns do. These leaves are actually non-photosynthetic. Photosynthetic. They photosynthesize on the stem, just like the uh, whisk fern does. Um, and if we you look at them in the wild, again, they have, um, looks like it has no leaves. But again, uh, they have strobili. Um, remember I t told you about the uh, the other groups and I said groups of sporophylls put together forms a strobilus? Voila! This is what your strobilus looks like. Okay, So whisk ferns also have strobili and they're basically just modified sporophylls put together into a structure and so that's where all the sporangia are, are the tippy top of the whisk fern plant. Okay, in a strobilus. That's it. Okay, I hope you can hear me.